morning. Grace and peace to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church in Highlands. If this is your first time here, we extend you a very, very special welcome. If you haven't been back here in a day or two, we also extend you a very, very special welcome. It is good to be gathered in this house of God where we consider things that are joyful and challenging, that bring us hope and that bring us together. May that be true of our worship today. If you will rise in body or in spirit, as we join in our opening litany together, from the corners of worry and fear, from the shadows where we huddle with our doubts, God calls us to this place of sanctuary where we can draw from love's deep wells. In every moment where we look for strength to continue, and every time wonder if faith is worth it, Jesus calls us to this time where we in every person who embraces us with acceptance, in every touch that offers healing and hope. The Spirit calls us to see those around us as God's beloved, our sisters and brothers of grace. May be seated. We turn our hearts to God now for a moment of confession, and this is our time to pray that God would open the gates of righteousness to us, gates that we cannot open ourselves. We can only enter them through Christ's forgiveness. So now let us confess our sins together with confidence in God's grace. 
Let us pray. God of all creation, we call ourselves your disciples, but we return stray from your teachings. Instead of following your way, we chart our own course and set our own pace. On our own, we hurt others by our words and our deeds. We harm the earth you entrust to our care. We find it easy to lie and hard to be truthful. Forgive us, we pray, and heal us. Cleanse our sin and return us to the path you want us to follow. Amen. Listen, friends, do you hear the sounds of God's love poured out for you? Yeah, look at that. Do you hear the sounds of God's healing balm, God's forgiveness? God is not done with us, friends, not by a long shot. We are more beloved than we will ever know, and God is working in us and in the world beyond our wildest imagination. The beginning of all that is forgiveness, so know that you are indeed forgiven and be at peace. Friends, believe in the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. As forgiven people, we are now invited to pass the peace with one another, the good word of Christian hospitality, and you may do so by exiting your seat or staying put, whichever you prefer, but know that the peace of Christ is here flowing within this space. Let us greet one another in good Christian love. The grace of our, uh, the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And the grace. Thank you. Thank you. I invite you to find your seats. And if you would like to join me for children's moment up here, you may do so. You may do so. Hey, Elliot. All right. Let's have a seat. Hey, Catherine. Yeah. Well, good morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Feeling ready for Halloween? Ready for candy? Yeah good. I know you are. I am too. Yeah, I told Claire that if you get a Butterfinger, you have to bring it to me, okay? Yes. 
So we are going to hear a text this morning that's a little challenging to hear. And I want to talk to you about a few things <clears throat> before Pastor Emily teaches it. And I brought some props, okay? So first is, I have these two pictures. These two. What did these make you think of? Tell me what you think of when you see these. You think of hearts, you think of love. Yeah, that's probably the pretty obvious answer, right? Love. Why would we think of love when we see heart? It's, this, it's kind of like the symbol, right? We use that symbol, it's kind of like the emoji for love. Who are some people that we love? Our parents, yes, good answer. Maybe our siblings, both of you have brothers. You have a brother too. Maybe our brothers, our sisters, a best friend, a teacher. And it's easy to identify these people, right? Because they're people that we know love us too. So that's a pretty easy answer. Yes, Elliot. What do you think of when you see these pictures? What do these look like? Arguing. People arguing. What else? People who are maybe mad at each other. Yeah, people, maybe one of them did something to the other and it made them really mad and upset. Do you think that's a possibility too? Well, I my dad. <laughs> yeah, sometimes we get mad at our parents. That's a totally real thing, a totally real thing. But so, wait, maybe or when we... Or bothered. Yes, or bothered. You're exactly right. Sometimes when we get mad at people, they are our, our enemies, right? Have you heard that word before, enemies? Well, today in our scripture, Jesus gives us a very important instruction. Jesus, to t Jesus tells us to do one thing. It's this. Do you want to read that, Wyatt? What does that say? Love your enemies. Have you heard that before? Yeah, yeah. It sounds a little hard, doesn't it? Yeah, it's like how do we love somebody that's been me maybe mean to us or someone that's hard to get along with? Yeah, like when someone does something that makes us sad, it's hard to forgive them. Yeah, or snarky, exactly. But there are some good reasons for loving our enemies. Mm -hmm. It demonstrates God's love to others. It sets a good example. And maybe, just maybe, it turns our enemies into friends. Wouldn't that be the best, the best result? Is if we loved our enemies so much that they then became our friends. Yeah. So even though this is a really hard lesson, it's one that's important and it's one that we can always work on. It's not like we can only work on it today or tomorrow, but we work on it every single day. And I know that all of you can do it because you've already shown lots of love all the time. So should we pray together now? Let's pray. Dear God, help us to remember that loving, our enemies that loving our enemies starts with us, starts with us. By, talking and listening to you, by talking and listening to you and doing our best to be like Jesus. Thank you, God, for showing us who to love and how to love. Amen. Right, so should we get up and say our parting word? Do we remember them? Do we remember them? Yeah, let's get up. Okay. All right. May God be with you here. May God be with you there. Great. All right. Thank you. Y'all gonna go with Miss Delane over here, okay?
Yeah, you do actually still have to do that. Love is not for the faint of heart. It's okay to laugh at that. Because it helps to hear, doesn't it? A friend of mine who has been walking through this sermon series with us faithfully uh, sent me a poem this week. It's written by J. Warren Welch. It goes like this. Love is messy. Even the healthiest, deepest, truest love is just two messy people trying to interact with each other in multiple complicated ways. If you can't handle messy, you're not ready for love. In the past two weeks, we have heard about some of the ways we experience the messiness of love, from the way love goes right hand in hand with grief, and the way that Jesus calls us to step out of our comfort zones to risk loving the people we wouldn't usually choose to love. Now, if we thought those were messy topics, Kelly just let the children know about maybe one of the messiest ways that Jesus calls us to love. So this text that I'm reading is going to come to us from Matthew's Gospel, and it is from Jesus' very famous Sermon on the Mount. And as we listen to the text today, I wonder if you can imagine yourself like the disciples, hearing these words preached from Jesus for the very first time. Before I turn to the text, let us pray. Loving God, help us so to hear your holy word that we may truly understand 
that understanding we may believe and believing we may follow in all faithfulness and obedience, seeking your honor and glory in all that we do through Christ our Lord. Amen. So listen now as the Spirit speaks to the church. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but I say to you, do not resist an evildoer. But if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your coat, give your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go on one mile, to go one mile, go also the second mile. Give to everyone who begs from you, and do not refuse anyone who wants to borrow from you. You have heard it, that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven, for he makes the sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. This is the hard, healing, and holy word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. My wise pastor friend Taylor says of this passage, that old thing. (laughs) She's kidding, of course. But isn't there some truth? to her joke. Turn the other cheek. Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. This is one of those biblical texts we treat like an old, uh, like, an, like an ugly sweater that Aunt Harriet knitted for us and gave us one Christmas. You remember that? We forced a smile, said thanks, and then tucked it deep in one of our drawers to pull out if and only if Aunt Harriet ever came back to visit. Years later, when she finally returns for the holiday festivities, we're almost surprised to find that sweater buried deep down under all the other clothes, riddled with moth holes and smelling old. Oh, we think, do I have to put that on? Maybe she's forgotten about it. Maybe I can pretend I've forgotten about it. I know, I'll just not say anything and see how it goes. Turn the other cheek. Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Nobody in their right mind wants to put that old thing on. Most of us walk around pretending like we just forgot about this part of Jesus' beloved Sermon on the Mount. I woke up early the other morning to work on this sermon and made the mistake of checking my phone while the coffee heated. Bad news screamed from the screen. Another mass shooting. More citizens, 3,000 of them children, dead in Gaza a massive rise in anti-Semitic hate crimes in our own country over the last month. As I sat on my sofa, the blank pages of a sermon staring back at me, all I could think was, not today, God. I am not ready to turn my cheek today. I am not ready to pray for another mass Shooter, I am not ready to pray for someone who would enact violence because of their own hate. I am not ready to love a politician who refuses to budge on gun laws. I don't want to hear that old sermon again this morning, Jesus, is what I was thinking. You know, it's tricky, risky even, to preach these difficult words of Jesus' sermon in these days of extreme 
political and ideological and theological division. The call to love our enemies is hard to talk about in mixed company because your enemies and my enemies may not be the same. If I'm not careful, if I don't choose my words right, I just might turn myself into an enemy. Now that's the messy part of love, isn't it? And it's why we need this commandment to love our enemies so very, very badly. The thing we want to hear least is the thing we need to hear most. We need it because when our enemies are coming at us, when the hurtful words are flung our way, when the awfulest of awful things happens to the ones that we love, our instinct is not to turn the other cheek. It is not to bite our tongues. It is not to unclench our fists. When we are hurt, our instinct is to hurt back. Because at least in the moment, it seems like the only way that we can deal with our hurt, no one wants to hurt alone. The most obvious choice to anyone who is hurting is to retaliate. You hurt me? Okay, I will hurt you back. And if I can't hurt you, then I will find somebody else to hurt just to ease the pain. Of course, we know it never, ever works that way. Was it Muhammad, Muhammad, Mahatma Gandhi who said it? An eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. The cycle of hurt in our world, we know it is on perpetual loop. But the Jesus that we love, the Jesus that we claim to follow, tells us to stop hurting each other, to end the cycle, to turn the other cheek. Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. If retaliation is instinctual, then loving our enemies must be a choice a courageous choice of holy resistance. It is, as another wise pastor friend Betsy says, a choice to summon the kingdom of God because retaliation has no place in God's holy reign, but love does. Put another way, if we cannot love our enemies, the ones whom God loves, then how can we honestly claim any hope in the reconciling, grace-giving meaning of the cross? If that grace is for us, it is for our enemies, too. And we all stand in need of God's amazing grace. Dear church, I will not stand here and say that this is easy. I love you too much to make that claim or to pretend like I have got this all figured out. Kelly said it so beautifully to our children. We have to do this every single day. Loving our enemies is one of the hardest and messiest parts of being a Christian. But Jesus knows we need to do it. So let's talk about how on earth we pray for our enemies. First, I think it helps to remember that prayer in and of itself has the power to enact change. Prayer can change people, even us. Perhaps praying for our enemies is the first step in transforming our own hearts. I heard a prayer that a, pra a pastor once prayed in the middle of his sermon. He was preaching that day about grace, telling that beloved story of the prodigal son, the son who betrayed his father and family, who squandered his inheritance and returned home in shame 
only after having in a pig pen enjoy the father throws a party to welcome his son home, but his older kid stands grumpily outside, refusing to join in the celebration. Now this pastor who was preaching about the grace that comes in that story of the prodigal son, he had been hurt by somebody, a fellow pastor actually, whose actions and ideas and words he vehemently opposed. As he preached, you could hear in his voice the searing ache of hurt that he felt. And so right in the middle of his sermon, he said this, The God I worship majestically loves all of us. If I've got my theology right here, if I can't learn to regard so-and-so as my brother and pray for him, then I am part of the problem instead of being part of the solution I really want to be. And then he asked if he could pray with the congregation. And this is what he said as he bowed his head. Lord, I need to talk to you about so and so. I need a place, I need in a place like this to just be blunt and honest and say, I got a belly full and I don't know what to do with it. And I don't think I'm all that unusual, God. Help me to know how to understand and how to regard with respect these others who seem so dislikable to me. Lord, I'm not sure whether I'm the kid from the pig pen or the one pouting from outside, but I just know that some way burning inside me is the same kind of animosity that leads to the kind of stuff that blows up places like Ukraine. Lord, help me take this seriously. Help us all, O God, and thank you. You really do love us all. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. So how do we pray for our enemies? We can start with honesty. I got a belly full and I don't know what to do with it. But God does. So pray that. I don't want to be doing this, God, but here I am. will work too. Or so-and-so makes me so mad I want to scream and to hit and to walk away and never look back. Or I am enraged, God, help. God can handle our anger. God can hear our honesty. God already knows what we're thinking, so we might as well come out and say it. We can name our anger to God. We can recognize how much our anger hurts. We can tell God all about how we want to hurt back. And we can ask for help and trust that God will Help us. So here's the deal. I realize that I could preach this sermon and I could encourage you all to go home this week and every day pray for your enemies. And I realize that I'd probably think about it this morning and go home and think I should do that and I should do that and I should do that. But I might not. So today, we're going to pray for our enemies together. Right here, right now, and even if it's hard and even if it hurts, the good news is that we won't be alone with our pain. We are the family of faith, called to practice together, so we are going to pray for our enemies. In your pews, there are blank pieces of paper. They're usually, they're on the ends of the pews. There should be enough for everyone. If there aren't enough in your pew, and there's some upstairs too, there should be pens and pencils. I want to make sure that everybody has a piece of paper. Choir, you've got pens, paper, and pencils. We've got some extras if you need a, a hand, if you can't find something to write with. everybody have a paper and something to write with? You're going to go home and tell your friends, my pastor made me do homework at church. So here's what I want you to do. 
I want you to take that paper and I want you to write down the names of your enemies. I want you to write them because I don't want you to just think about them and have them out there in the ether. You don't have to write their whole name, you can put an initial. Maybe it's a group. I don't know who your enemies are. But I want you to write them down so as you are praying for them, you can see that you have named these people that have hurt you. Take a moment to do that and then we will pray. After you've written down your list, maybe it's short, maybe it's long, we will pray. And you can write your prayer too on this piece of paper or you can speak to God in silence. This will not be a terribly long moment of silence, but it won't be terribly short either. And it might feel a little bit uncomfortable. This is messy and hard. I will be quiet for two minutes. And then at the end of two minutes, I will close us with prayer. Because God asks us, because Jesus tells us, let us pray for our enemies. Most merciful and loving God, thank you for hearing our prayers. Forgive us for every act of retaliation. Forgive us when we wish to harm our enemies. Ease the pain wrenching our hearts, our lives, our world. Help us end the cycle of hurt. And remind us once again that love disarms, just as Christ's arms flung wide open have taught us again and again and again. It is in his loving name that we pray. Amen. This time I invite us all to stand. As we have been sitting together, joined as one, now we stand together and join as one as we proclaim our faith using the affirmation of faith. 
in the bulletin. Church, what do you trust? Christ teaches us to go beyond legal requirements in serving and helping our neighbors, to treat our neighbors' needs as our own, to care passionately for the other's good, to share what we have, it is part of our discipline to live in simplicity, avoiding greed and luxury that threatens our neighbor's society. We are obligated to speak truth in love, to listen with patience and openness, to love our enemies, to accept the risk and pain which love involves. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to turn our attention to a couple of announcements this morning. Um, you will notice on the back of the bulletin, uh, next Sunday, November 5th, we are doing a blessing of the animals outside of our property. And um, there's some instructions there about maybe who would be most interested in coming. Blessing of the animals is both for animal lovers and animals themselves. So if you have a pet at home that you think would enjoy being around other people and other animals, please uh, feel free to bring them for a brief service and a blessing outside that we will all partake in together as a church family. Uh, and that will be at 2 o'clock next week. I believe that is all of our announcements this morning. Uh, as you are able, please be sure to sign the friendship pads in your pews. If it's your first time, if it's your 50th time, we want to know that you are here and extend a warm welcome to you always. So please be sure to do that. Now with all of these things in mind, we take a moment to re-enter our bodies and our minds into a time of prayer together. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, giver of every good and perfect gift, we turn our hearts to you now to pray. We pray not only for ourselves, but for people everywhere, even enemies. We open our hearts to you now, knowing that you are already there. We ask that you meet us in the calm and beauty of this space. Merciful God, your steadfast presence is exactly what we need. You never abandon us. Your faithfulness to the covenant you make with your people is unwavering. You walk with us, go before us, envelop us with your goodness and grace. Help us to feel your close presence with every breath and each heartbeat. May our awareness of your nearness Empower us to do justice, love kindness, and keep walking with you so that others will come to know your love through our witness. Make us a grateful, joy-filled people, a light to which others are drawn. Gracious God, knowing all too well that today's problems are enough for today, we entrust to your compassionate care all the burdens that we no, can no longer carry, the worries we can no longer bear. Take from us the anxieties that are beginning to overtake us, the grief of losses, the fear for our well-being, and that of those we love. Take from us the shame of our deeds we cannot undo and the doubts that prevent us from moving forward. We hand them over right now, believing, trusting that our Lord intercedes for us and that the Spirit will be at work. God, you created for us a world that is perfect, and yet we are mere humans layered with our own imperfections, our own complexities. Though your vision of peace and unity is what we so long for, we know all too well that that's a dream and not our current reality. 
We especially pray for our siblings that are victims of violence and war. We pray for the families and victims suffering in Israel, Palestine, Afghanistan, Ukraine, and Russia. We pray for the families and victims that were fatally shot in another mass shooting in the state of Maine earlier this week. While there is so much unknown, God, in these moments of distress, we do know that violence is never a solution. Help us to be an extension of your peace. Help us to be practitioners of your love and light. God, oh God, help us. We also take this time to pray for our church family, our beloved community here in Highlands and beyond. We pray for our enemies too. If we are to rise to the call of being practitioners of your love, O God, we must acknowledge that loving all people means all. So when we fall short of this task, we pray that you will remind us how it is done. Glorious God, no prayer is too many for you, and for that we are most grateful. We ask now for whatever tugs on our hearts and weighs on our minds, calls from our souls. You know it before we name it. You desire what is best for you, best for your beloved world. You plan a hope-filled future for us. You refuse to give up on us. You refuse to give up on our beautiful and good creation. Help us, O oh God, to dream your dreams and envision your will until that day when Christ may come again and all will be well. We pray in the name of, our, of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, freely we have received, and now freely we are invited to give back. So let us now offer our tithes and offerings to the church.
Let us pray. Loving God, we have so many reasons to say thank you to you. Your generosity, grace, and mercy are astounding, and we pray that the gifts we offer here today might be used this week in your name. Help us to be generous. Help us to be loving. May we follow your way always. And strengthen us to recognize your many blessings everywhere, to be grateful and to respond accordingly. Amen. church, I take great comfort in knowing that as I go out and try to do what Kelly told the children to do, to pray tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day, and the day after that for my enemies, I know that I will not be alone, because I trust that you all will be joining in this good and holy work as we seek to spread love and end hurt in our world and in God's world. So as we all go, may we go with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit with all of us now and forever. Amen.